Hello everyone, let's talk about logging in Java using Log4j. First of all, why do we need Log4j? And why can't we just use system out print line? Well, while system out print line can be useful for quick and simple debugging, it's not a suitable choice for production applications or complex software systems. Also, logging frameworks provide a more robust and flexible solution for managing and analyzing log data in a professional and efficient manner. In addition, by using logging, we can send log messages to multiple places, like to a file, to a database, email, into a console, and other places as well. Also, logging has the concept of levels. Those levels are very important because we can use them to filter our logs and some logs are more important than others. So what can we log? Let's see a couple of special log levels. All level shows all log messages. The error informs users that an exception is thrown. The warn means just something feels not right that may cause problems but not stopping the execution. Debug is more used when we deploy the software and it logs debugging information. Info is just to inform about the process going, like I'm starting to read the file now, or I'm writing to the database. The fatal means that our program is crashing, so something really bad is happening. So these log levels are very handy when we need to debug. And nowadays it's really important to use logging when having microservices, because a customer's single journey across through applications could head a series of microservices that are not necessarily connected. So the ability to create these logs, place them in different places and filter them by severity level can save us a lot of time. Logs from different sources can also be then aggregated into a centralized location for managing and analyzing it using different tools like the common Elasticsearch or Kibana. In Log4j, we have two main concepts, loggers and appenders. Loggers are like messengers that record information. They come in different levels from not so important to very important. Appenders are like delivery guys. They decide where the recorded information goes, like on a piece of paper or the computer screen. So loggers decide what is important and appenders decide where it goes. Simple, right? Okay, first of all, we need to set up our POM file with log4j dependencies. So here is my POM file, and I copy the dependencies here. Of course, at the time of you watching this video, the latest version might be different. So basically, we just add the dependency for log4j in the dependency section in our POM file. Log4j uses configuration files to define how and where log messages should be recorded. For this, we can either use an XML file or properties file. So I have created a log4j2 XML file and placed it in the resources. The naming is also important here. So here is a breakdown of the key elements in this configuration file. First of all, we have the appenders section. This section defines the different appenders which determine where log messages are sent. So this is an appender called file. It logs messages to a file named myapp.log in the current directory. You can also customize the file name and location as needed. And the pattern layout specifies the format of log entries. The pattern attribute defines the layout, including date, log level, class name, thread name and the message, and the end represents a new line. This section defines loggers and their log levels. The root logger is the root of the logger hierarchy and the level attribute specifies the log level for this logger, which is set to debug and this means it will log messages at the debug level and above. And it's also configured to use the file appender that we defined earlier. So log messages from this logger will be sent to the file myapp.log. Now we can instantiate logging in our Java class and start logging messages as you can see here in the example. 
So you will find log messages in the myapp.log file that we have defined. We can also place info here as level and it will log messages starting from the info level and above as you can see here. We can also log messages to the console and in fact many log4g configurations include a console appender by default to log messages to the console. If it's not included you can add a console appender to achieve this. So we can modify our configuration file and add an appender for the console. So this defines a console appender named console that logs messages to the standard output with the target system out with a specified format. And of course we need to attach the console appender to a logger. You can add it to the root logger or create a separate logger for specific parts of your application. So let's adjust the root logger to be for the console and add another separate logger for the file appender. So we can here change the name to, to be a console. So the reference now is the console appender and we can also now add another logger for the log file. And you can see now that we are logging also the log messages on the console as well as in our myapp.log file. And last but not least, let's see how to use properties file for the configuration. So here I have created a log4g properties file and basically I have the same configuration. So I have two appenders, one for a console appender and the second one for a file. And the root logger uses the console appender and the logger named org.example uses the file appender. So now you can see that I have log messages in the console and also in our log file.